Devotion is the brand new wide release hitting theaters this weekend. Are you devoted to seeing it in a theater? It's good. What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to the channel. We're reviewing a lot of movies this Thanksgiving weekend, so if you want to hit that notification bell, it's the best way to know uh, that I'm posting a video if YouTube decides to tell you. But I need you guys down below. Were you excited for Devotion? Are you excited to see Kang the Conqueror and Hangman from Top Gun Maverick together? So a pair of U.S. Navy fighter pilots risked their lives during the Korean War to become some of the Navy's most celebrated wingmen directed by J.D. Dillard, and this movie is rated PG-13 for strong language, some war action violence, and smoking. Steer clear of the smoking, kids. Actually, this is one of those war-type movies that I would say is appropriate for families, maybe not of all ages, but even early teens, I don't think they're going to have a problem with this. This is indeed one you can see with everybody this upcoming weekend. And our two stars, Jonathan Majors, Glenn Powell, headline a true story that is both heartbreaking and somewhat entertaining, especially when we uh, get into that third act and we are able to see some of these war scenes play play out when they're in the air and the way that they visualize some of these fight scenes that are maybe fewer and further in between than what I expected. That's fascinating, but the story itself is one that involves the exploration of our main character, played by Jonathan Majors, Jesse Brown, a man who has been looked down upon because of the color of his skin, and someone who continues to take in the words that are being said to him and repeat them over and over to himself. There's an incredibly powerful scene with Majors where he is doing this in a mirror, and you can feel the pain in his words, and there are numerous examples in this movie to where that's kind of displayed. They never overdo that. That, which is one thing I'm thankful for while watching this movie. They don't make it to where it's something that's too difficult to watch. Other films do that, understandably so, but with this PG-13 story that they're telling here, I'm glad they kept it more uplifting than maybe they could have and focused on the camaraderie between Brown and Hudner, a friendship that is fascinating. You get to see it from the beginning progress into something that is a bit more up and down than maybe you expect. They're not always on the same page, but they're always fighting for each other. And really, the entire group, all of these individuals, when they get in situations to where it's very clear what people are doing to Jesse Brown, they make an effort to stand up for him. And Brown understands what he can and cannot do to get himself in an even worse situation. Uh, he's a really smart individual, I almost said character, but based on a true story. Again, it's a story you're going to read about and be fascinated from start to finish. And it's one that isn't as well known as some other war stories. And this war in general is not one that's often talked about, or at least this specific battle that they're fighting, being up above their enemies and having to kind of go into this enemy territory and do some things that are interesting. Their goals are fascinating, the camaraderie, uh, the bond that is formed between them, and even these sessions where they are training and learning how to do what they do. They're not as intense as something like a Top Gun Maverick, and a lot of people's going to make that comparison. They're going to say it's a war movie, but it's also kind of like a Top Gun Maverick because they're up in planes. Not necessarily. It reminds me much more so of other World War II films we've seen in the past. It's going to get those comparisons because they're in planes and Glenn Powell is in this movie, uh, but he's playing a drastically different character. And the characters, again, we have our main two. Uh, Jesse Brown is someone you're going to root for from start to finish. It's the performance. It's just the fact that he's a very humble individual. The conversations with his wife, Daisy Brown, played by Christina Jackson, who does a nice job. Those humanize this character. I do believe they spent a bit too much time before we get into that process of starting the battle. There's around an hour and 20 minutes spent before really anything of note happens from an action perspective. And I get building up your characters. That's something you have to do in a film like this. But I felt as if they spent too much time doing that. And then some of these other side characters, whether it be a Joe Jonas or a Nick Hargrave, they are good, and they're a nice support system for Jesse and Tom, but no one gets exploration outside of our main two guys when we are with them in this war setting. So you don't really care about anyone other than our main two, 
and that's both a good and a bad. They don't want to spend too much time over here, but you almost have to at points for us to care about the camaraderie between all of these individuals. And I also think it could have added to the end of this movie, and that pacing does weigh it down. I also think the runtime weighs it down. Like I said, you read this story, you're going to be fascinated, but the way that it translates, uh, it just wasn't always as compelling as it was trying to be. You know, you had the music swelling, you have a conversation between two individuals, and then you go to the next scene, and it's another conversation, and the next scene, and we're talking about something that may or may not play in. Eventually, it could just be a side conversation that doesn't come back into play. So I do feel as if they spent too much time in other places. But when we get to the battles towards the end, it looks really good. I think the visuals are nice here. Overall, the cinematography, nothing outstanding, nothing I've never seen before, but it works. And the direction of these action-heavy war scenes, I mean, you have the rousing score that's coming in. The sound design is rock solid. Not as good as some other big movies we've seen this year, but it does its job. And the effects of these massive shots being fired in the air and something coming and crashing down on land, I just thought it looked great. You could tell there's some practical in there. J.D. Dillard, he's a good director. He directed Slight, which I was a fan of. Funny thing is, though, I had pacing problems with that film. I, I still have pacing problems with this movie. Part of me would even say this movie is more of a drama than a war film, and it feels like it's trying to be that at points, which will inevitably disappoint some people. Maybe that disappointed me, but I was okay with it at points because some of these dramatic beats were compelling. If you're here right now and you want to drop a like, that would help out this channel. And if you're still watching, just to confuse everyone else, comment, Kang flies planes. That'll get them. Devotion turns a compelling true story into a slightly formulaic war drama that manages to overcome its conventions with outstanding performances and grand visual effects. Jonathan Majors is a star. You know this. I'm going a 68% with my score. I enjoy this movie. It is a recommendation from me. If you like this genre, I think it's worth a watch this Thanksgiving weekend. More Thanksgiving movies to come. The Fablemans and Strange World. Those reviews are coming soon. This morning, I dropped my review for Wednesday on Netflix. I'll see you guys later.